Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the Genius Cast Season 4. I am being consistent with this show again. I know that it took three months before to, between episodes 3 and 4, but uh, I promise I'll be consistent. We're back. Last time we talked to There's No Steak, a.k.a. Alex. If you guys want to go check out that episode, link is in the description. But we're back today with Episode 5, and we're talking to the man himself, Toonster Games. He is the man behind the Six Horrors franchise and also a couple other funny FNAF joke games like Five Nights at Sands and Five Nights at Bleeze Cleese. How you doing, man? I've, I've, like, uh, I've been alright. Yeah, so uh, why don't you... I know I gave you kind of a brief introduction, but why don't you kind of tell us about yourself? Uh, well, I'm Toonster Games. I am a, uh, I'm a content creator. I've been working on stuff in the FNAF community since 2015. I make a lot of joke games, um, most well known for the series Six Horrors back in around 2016. And I've uh, had a pretty plentiful career uh, working on various uh, you know, side projects, such as uh, I had a minor involvement with the, uh, with the popular game Winter Wonderland uh, by Luminance. And, uh, you know, I, I, I all around just make a bunch of content in general, you know, whether it be, you know, funny, uh you know serious stuff you know i just i do all sorts of stuff in general and, you know i just i just like doing it because it's fun for me you know in many ways all right all right so uh and we'll get to know a little bit more about you farther along with this but we have a lot of questions today we got a lot from youtube and twitter and discord and everything if you guys would like to have your question featured and future episodes of this series be sure to keep an eye out for my social media posts again i do it on youtube on the community tab i do twitter and in my discord server so you can find all those in the description so we're gonna go ahead and dive into the community tab questions first are you ready to roll toonster i'm ready to rock and roll so our first questions are from player he says hi guys i have three questions for toonster the first one is what inspired the six horrors games um, it was more or less, um, a period of time in 2015 when I was working on this FNAF fan game series called One of the Night at MLGs, which was, uh, my first ever joke game series. It's, I'm taking this joke game series a bit too seriously, and I was like, what am I doing? You know, if I just want to make a serious game, why don't I just make a serious game? So, I decided to just, you know, cut my losses with it, uh, cancel the game, and then ultimately from that, I uh, had the idea of Six Horrors. Uh, you know, I kind of came up with the idea for it through this concept art I drew in MS Paint. And I uh, was uh, had the modeler for the character, Jay Loria, who worked on uh, the Finest of Chuck series. And because uh, I knew them at the time. And I asked them, you know, hey, can you model this for me? And they were like, yeah, sure. And, you know, from that, uh, I just used the model, and from that, uh, Six Horrors was created. Now, I have played, I think, I played one of them back in, uh, I think it was late 2018, and one of the FNAF fan game streams I did. Do you remember which one I did? Was it the first one or the second one? It was the second one, yeah. Right, and uh, I, I, gotta, I gotta play the Six Horrors games again. I gotta give those another shot. Um, but I, I remember them being legitimately creepy because I mean, I, 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 from what I remember, um, I, I was dying a lot and it, um, the, the jump scares are, are pretty, um, they're, they're better than most that I've seen. So I, uh, I gotta, I gotta do that again. I gotta play those games again. If you guys want to, want to see me revisit those while well, y'all know what to do, um, but yeah, let's yeah. Uh, let's move on to the second one from player. If you did other games that weren't horror and or joke like, what would it be? Um, well, I don't really have ideas for original projects per se, mainly because like um, I kind of am adamant in that I'm sort of in my own lane when it comes to like working on stuff. Because like I know that most people kind of follow the path of they're gonna go from FNAF fan game to making their own serious, like, original projects. That's not really, like, my ideal. Uh, but, like, uh, I think, like, I, I had, like, occasional ideas for stuff out here and there over the years. Uh, a lot, one of them specifically was this cancel project I had in mind called You Are a Virus. 
which was this uh, game based on you're essentially sort of like the the uh, like this like RPG series back in the day of uh, Five Nights at uh, you know Five Nights at Fuck Boys, which was uh, but it was could be about more about like uh, like you know sort of technology, and your goal was essentially to just try to fry the the motherboard by doing like uh you'd be a virus just going around the computer you know going around all that and you'd be going around to uh essentially the climax would be to fry the motherboard and that would be the end of the game i never did it um and then that got replaced with another project which i didn't i don't end up really liking but i think to be honest i never really feel i don't really have the heart to do it like a, a, a like a non like FNAF related project in general. Um, I do respect people who obviously do it, of course, but it's just not really my my, my thing per se. Uh, I hope that could kind of answer it, you know, but. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Th that, that RPG idea sounds really interesting. Like you running around the computer and then eventually frying the motherboard. I would love to see something like that actually happen because I have a soft spot for RPGs. So like, if you were to ever make something like that, like, I would be all over that. I love games like that, especially with concepts that sound that unique, so. Yeah, definitely. All right, and then players, last question is, where did the name Toonster Games come to be? Um, so, the name Toonster is kind of a bit of an interesting story. So, years ago, I never went by the name Toonster. Um, initially back in 2013, I made my DeviantArt account, which is like my first ever account I've ever had online besides me on Roblox. And at the time, I was a very big fan of this, um, this cartoon block uh, named, uh, Toonami that recently came back. It's an anime cartoon block. And, um, you know, I came up, you know, I was like nine years old, I think, at the time. And I was like coming up with a username. And so I came up with the username Toonami Fan 2013, which is, you know, very original. Um, and I used that username for about two years, uh, up until around 2015, when I started getting into making games in general. And, like, um, I was a really big fan of um, this developer named uh, Ricky G, uh, who made the FNAF Game Maker series back in... Uh, 2015, who now does stuff uh, in the Undertale community, such as I think, like, uh, Don't Forget and Undertale. Um, I, he had this, like, longer iteration of his username, which was, I think, it was like Rickster Doodle, I think. It was a Rickster game. So I kind of just mashed the two together, and then that sort of ultimately became what my username would be. I don't know where the 95 came from. I just kind of came up with that on a whim. Um, but I mean, the username in general is not exactly something original because I know that there's, there's like, uh, like, uh, there's plenty of people who have gone by the name Toonster over the years. And there, hell, there was even a, I, when I, I think when I first came up with the name, there was this block, uh, I think internationally called Nick Toonsters, which was like, okay, that, they, this, this just made me like feel bad because I came up with a not really that original username. But I feel like I've used it for so long that it's sort of kind of synonymous with my brand that like I feel like even if I changed it, I know nobody I knew would ever call me stuff than anything other than Toonster because it's sort of just muscle memory. Like being like, oh, that's Toonster, you know, what's up Toonster, you know, stuff like that. You know, it's just kind of muscle memory, but that's kind of where the, the username came from primarily. Interesting. Yeah, I, I get what you mean about the muscle memory. Like, say, when, say, Marat changed his name from, you know, Mickey to Marat. It took a lot of a lot of getting used to with that. I mean, like, I still call him Mickey nowadays. My, my brain still hasn't gotten used to that. But, I mean... It, oh, that... yeah, no, I, I I still think of him primarily as, like, a pro negative Mickey because that's just what I've known him by for so many years. Right. And... Like, say, if I were to change my name to something else, I mean, like, you guys know me as, as Bud. It's just, that's just what my name is. And then if I were to change it to something else, I can see people having a very difficult time adjusting to that. So. Oh, yeah. So I think I'll, I'll, I think I'll stick with the name for, for the time being. So. Yeah, definitely. All right. Our next one is from Willie Dog. The first one is, what has been the toughest part of making the six horrors games? 
Um, I wouldn't say much for the um, the classic ones because, admittedly, my memory is kind of failing me when it comes to it. It's, it's been about seven years, but I can kind of talk about the the updates we did in 2018, and that was probably just the fact that we all developed those updates on a relatively big time crunch most of the time, uh, because that was just sort of the thing. Because we, for for both uh, the one and two updates, we developed them for specific holidays, you know, just to you know be seasonal. So stuff like the first game's update was on Halloween, and then the second game was done on Christmas. Uh, I think we would have initially done Thanksgiving, but we were like, okay, we'll just wait till Christmas. That's kind of the primary thing. But like, I would say like the 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 hard part of it was just like trying to do all of that, like to kind of compile all that together on a, such a short like uh, like a short amount of time. So stuff like um, the Six Wars Two update specifically, which I think is like um something that you know is probably like the most uh most refined one out of the two um i think took uh we i used the original source code i did back in 2016 and, and i i think i really just like i think i just in general like re i didn't recode anything but i did the cold coding process for the update i think roughly in 10 days so i started on december 15th and i think i wrapped it up mostly on the 24th uh it was um it was definitely a crunch per se <laughs> like no it was it was very much uh, i was putting myself on that bit of a time crunch uh for it uh the first one game's update is something much more hectic because um well the, the update itself was kind of done maybe three days like prior um, but we were planning, but we ended up essentially adding a character last minute, which was uh, Tammy, which was uh, you know, you know the female character. Uh, but because you know by popular request, I decided you know to do it. And um, but the problem was was that I did it in two days, so I think I pretty much had it had to add a whole new character in uh, before the the update was run. And like, no, it was it was it was unbelievably heck. Uh, but that was probably the hardest part, which is dealing with a major time crunch. But, you know, in, in cases like the Six Orders 2 update, I think it was totally worth it, for sure. Because I think that was probably, like, the best I could have done in that time frame. Gotcha, gotcha. I gotta... Man, you're making me want to go and, and play these. Like, I gotta go back and play them. Like, they... they Because I remember, again, playing the second one uh, in 2018. It's like, you know what? We, we, gotta, we gotta go back and revisit it. Like, it just sounds like something I'd... Because I remember not being great at it do you remember if it was because i just wasn't good at the game or like i didn't really understand it do you remember what what was going on when i was playing it oh uh, i haven't seen it in some time i think you just kind of what i imagined it was being is just that you kind of had some other stuff in the lineup so you it didn't go through it all the way which is that's fine i mean i was obviously other stuff in the lineup i didn't want to interfere with that it was just like um i think it was just prime it might have had a bit of like trouble with it but i don't think it it might have just been occasional like you know balancing issues because i think i did just release it like at the time so i had to you know i think it was refined a little bit like in between like i think like a patch later i think i fixed up most of the issues i had with it oh uh, okay all right and then the second one from willie is how did you feel when markiplier played blees cleese um it was really humbling to me uh, uh, in many ways. Uh, I've been, uh, to be kind of clear about it, I've been a big fan of Markiplier since I was like eight or nine years old. I used to be a very big fan of his. You know, I I, I loved when he played the, you know, the Slender games where he would play like occasional, like, you know, like Creepypasta Orient, like Jeff the Killer and Illusion Ghost Killer, stuff like that. I've been a long time viewer of his for a, like as like a lot of my life and you know i respected him majorly you know throughout you know my time on like youtube because he he was someone that you know i i wanted to kind of I, I guess not strive to be but it was just a lot of like an inspiration to me to you know to keep creating you know stuff in general so it was very humbling to me to have some you know play my play my work in general and you know I don't know. It, I mean, whether or not he could be laughing at it or laughing with it, you know, is out of the question. You know, he seemed to enjoy it. I'm very uh, thankful for it. You know, it's something I don't at all take for granted. 
because it's just like you know it's a it's kind of a once in a lifetime opportunity i would say you know it's like not everybody can really get to say that you know, oh i got my game played by a youtuber with like 30 million subs that's not like someone that something that someone can say every day but you know it's like i don't like to take have that be like something i focus on like egotistically because you know as much as i would say i could have a right to do that i don't look at it that way in fact sometimes i occasionally even forget that happened because it's just like it's such a crazy thing to say out loud but that did happen and you know in many ways i'm immensely thankful to him um and i'm thankful that you know the game you know kind of got to bring a new audience to an extent and you know in some ways i've occasionally still seen it like past then you know um even though I don't even work on the series anymore, because uh, you know it's been it's been long enough, I, I think I kind of move on to something else. But you know, it's like uh, the fact that you know occasionally I would see people you know bring up the series, you know, like about have it be, have it be like uh, I saw it on like some perfect FNAF shots like Twitter, like maybe like two years ago, and I thought that was like, man, it's it's crazy to me that, like how much that that, that game kind of you know made an impact, and I never even really thought about it. So it's like, um, you know, it's crazy to me and I'm, I'm immensely thankful to Mark, you know, because he's been an inspiration of mine for years and, you know, uh, it's just a very humbling experience to me, yeah. Yeah, I've had my my own experiences with Markiplier. Obviously, I haven't made any games myself, but I there were several times that he played my Happy Wheels levels in a few of his, you know, old Happy Wheels highlights videos, like way back in like 2013. Yeah. Or I think it's maybe in 2014 as well. There were several he played actually, and it was like just it's an unreal experience, like seeing him play something you made. So I can relate to that. Uh, but I think the biggest thing, and I think a lot of people, I don't know if a lot of people know about this, and I, I don't know if you know about it or not. But he has actually directly uh, sh shouted me out in a way. Um, in in 2017, he was playing an RPG fan game of him called The Legend of Markiplier, and that's a series that's actually pretty pretty close to my heart. I, I, I played the heck out of that series uh, back when it first came out. I'm, I'm actually pretty good friends with the developer of it, um, his name's Necrodusk, and Markiplier was streaming the first one, and he gets to a point in the game where like he didn't really know what to do, and so he had to go and look up other videos of like people who had played the game to kind of like see what he needed to do next and at that point in time i think i was like the only one who had done like a full series on it and so like it's really cool you can still go back and look in the stream he you can hear like him like looking at stuff he's talking he's like looking at videos and you can very very briefly hear my voice in his stream like it's really cool and because you hear my voice very briefly and he's just like, um, I'm, I'm just I'm just looking up someone playing it. I, I'm looking up the next genius playing this and like hearing him say my name was just like, I mean, it, it's it's a, did, he, did he say your name when when he played please, please? Oh, I don't think he did because I never really the thing is with those games. I never really credited myself by name in it like, but like. I think like uh, people knew that I created it because I, you know, I try to get my name out. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think I ever heard him say it. But I, I think for me, it's like um, I never really thought that much about it. If it was, if he said it out loud, I would have thought I was like, that's insane. Uh, but you know, it never it didn't happen like that. But I mean, I think still the fact that he even checked out my work, regardless, you know, because it was all by luck essentially. I'm very thankful for it. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm I'm thankful for what he's done too. But it's um, yeah, it, it really is surreal when a big YouTuber like that like recognizes your your stuff. It, it's it, it is a very humbling experience, and um, you know, I still watch him from time to time. When when did he play Please Please? Because I don't remember seeing that video. Uh, it was October of 2018 when I did uh, I did the re-release of uh, I did the re-release of the games like as a collection you know kind of it's just a, it's a test bench to kind of combine a bunch of my older work into one application uh you know just kind of just on a whim i thought it'd be fun to try to mess around with it and i'm uh you know it's it's crazy that it, i think it's just crazy to me that it even happens like to be honest with you because it was, it was all by chance really 
I, I don't have any contact with him. I've never had like big contacts with like anybody like that big. So the fact that it just happened like purely by a stroke of luck is like that was that was inspiring to me. Yeah, absolutely. All right, our next questions are from Shadow Jagger. His first question is, what led to the lore of Six Horrors? Um, I know with the original one, I kind of came up with a lot of it, uh, like on a whim. Uh, that's kind of how I did a lot of my older work when it comes to lore. It's like, it very much is just like something I would come up with, you know, I just come up with it like as I went because I never really have a planned story in mind. I just kind of try to find my way to make it connect over a period of time. Uh, with uh, the updates, I've been trying to give it a much more grounded storyline, but the issue is is that occasionally we still have to occasionally rewrite stuff um, because you know over time we're like think, like look back at some of it and we're like okay maybe some of these dates don't quite line up. I uh, you know from when we made it. Uh, but ultimately, like, like I think it's just very much like a, a case where I just come up with a lot of this on the way. And it's just like, uh, I kind of just like to do it, you know, like, I just kind of just like to come up with stuff as I go. Gotcha. Okay. And our next question is, if you were to revive a canceled fan game of yours, what would you do differently? Um. I'm trying to think, because uh, I've done a lot of canceled projects over the years. Um, I do kind of like wonder about that question myself. Um, I feel like there's a lot of aspects I could do differently about some of the stuff I've done because, like, uh, well, there's a lot I could like I can name, uh, but ultimately, it's like I feel. Yeah, you know, it's actually a good question. I never really thought about it like that, like thoroughly. Um, I kind of wish with uh, some of the stuff with uh, with Six Horrors Midway uh, that it didn't that some of the stuff behind the scenes didn't quite go the way then uh, end up the way it did because I don't know if it was kind of out of my control um, because of just internal shuffles with us, but at the time, but you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, but like I think it's important to me that uh, like I wish generally like, that uh, that whole project was was uh, done better, you know, to an extent with you know not as much like internal stuff because I think th there's ideas from it that I really like, uh, uh, but ultimately it's just like uh, it didn't work out and not because of the game itself. It's just we had you know some internal shuffles at the time which were which were resolved, of course. But you know, I think there was some ideas from it that were really cool. Uh, same with uh, same with like uh, Awoken uh, to an extent. But Awoken was kind of just a continuation of what I had in mind for Midway. It was me trying to just do the ideas I did for Midway because uh, Jay was not going to use those ideas for. Well, Jay was going to rework a lot of it for um, uh, the final product, which was Project Midway. Um, but I wanted to try to kind of do what I had in mind for Awoken to some extent at one point in time. But I think just in general, some of the stuff with, with four ideas, like, there's some ideas in them. Not all of them, I, I think I think are still genuinely nice ideas to consider at some point. But, uh, you know, I guess that just being general, the stuff with four, I think would be interesting to, you know, experiment on, you know, going forward. Gotcha. Well, you know, maybe something will come of that one day. Who knows? Yeah. All right. And then Shadow Jagger's last question is Pepsi or Coca-Cola? Just for fun. Uh, Coca-Cola would probably be my, my answer to that. Yeah. I I mean, I don't really drink a lot of soda these days, but that, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. I've had both of them and, and something about like just Coke and Coke Zero just are, are better to me. I mean, not not like, knocking Pepsi. I just I, I just prefer Coke. I don't know, um, like because they taste similar. Like they're similar, but I just I don't know. Something about Coke is just a little bit better. Oh yeah, they they taste pretty similar. It's just that like uh, I would say like uh, 
PepsiCo is like better at like doing like other stuff. Like Mountain Dew is like by far my favorite soft drink. Mm -hmm. uh, but like like in terms of like regular cola, I think Mountain Dew. Like not a Mountain Dew. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Coca Cola is usually the best one to do it. Like just like it just it just got a nice taste to it. Like Pepsi just kind of tastes like something like you could get the similar taste from an off brand to an extent. It's not like it's bad, but you know a lot of off brand stuff kind of kind of matches with it to an extent. So it's not like as much of a wow, I guess, to it. Yeah, and hey, no no beef to anybody who uh, prefers Pepsi. You know, if there are any Pepsi enjoyers out there, I mean, it's it's also a good cola. So, uh, I mean, I mean, I did uh, I did a thing called fucking what is it Pepsi the movie back in the day. Uh, I was like I, I drank a, like just a can of Pepsi. So I mean, I'm a fan of Pepsi. I'm just I I I, I just very much prefer uh, Coca Cola for sure. I do enjoy Pepsi Max. I've uh, I remember when that was. I don't I don't know if it's discontinued here in America, but I remember that they they had it a while back, and uh, and I was I was a fan. I, I like the Pepsi Max, and I wish that they would bring that back because I will drink that for sure. But I don't know where you know, it went. I, I've never had it. I... Yeah, it's like uh, I think it was just like Pepsi Zero, like with jacked up with caffeine. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. So, right. I mean, I think so. I don't. I think the UK still still does it, but uh, but I have I you can't, you can't find it anywhere here, at least where I live, which is sad. Bring it oh. back. Bring it back. All right. Next question is from Escaped Fred Fifty Two. What game did you have fun making? I would assume he's asking like, uh, would you have like the most fun making? Um, that's actually an interesting one. Uh. I, I really had a lot of fun despite the uh, development struggles I had with two. So like uh like Six Orders Two update, uh, it's definitely the one I enjoyed working on a lot because uh, it was interesting to watch it all come together and to hear uh, people's input of it at the time. You know, because uh, I think it was definitely one I I really enjoyed. Um, I did also have a lot of fun working on the most recent Finite at Sands game, uh, Finite, Finite at Sands Raw Deal, which was one that I, I really enjoyed, you know, working on, you know, as a, as a group effort, and, you know, it was, it was something that I, I really enjoyed making. All right, gotcha. Our next questions are from OGB205. First question is, will you ever make a Six Horrors 3, and what other games will you make in the future? You know, honestly, I, I would say never say never when it comes to it. I, um, I've sort of had a code, code oh, like back before I took my hiatus that when it comes to like projects of mine that haven't been properly, like that have been announced, but I never really talk about. But like, uh, like that would, I usually just try to keep quiet about it, you know, as much as I can. Um, because that's kind of what I would do. Uh, but, you know, it's the dust is settled on it. You know, my mindset's kind of changed. I feel like a problem with me is I've kind of been a bit too, um, you know, uptight with like uh, being like uh, when it comes to like my projects and all that. You know, saying like, oh, you know, I, you know, I, I would love to give you an update, but I can't talk about it right now. You know, I feel like you know, since it didn't happen, you know, the 2019 version of it did not happen. Unfortunately, you know, there's a lot of factors to why it did, um, but ultimately it just didn't work out. Um, but I would say never, never say never when it comes to a potential retake of it, because I do think there's still great ideas that I could do with it. It's just that, you know, currently I just got a lot on my mind and I just got a lot of things I got to figure out. Um, and that's just kind of the primary thing I'm trying to do like currently. Uh, but you know, if, if we're all free, I can get the band back together, uh, with, um, you know, with Spinacher and all that I would. I would totally be down to. It's just, you know, it just all depends on, you know, what's going on with us, really. Yeah, and hey, man, if you make it, I, I will play it. So keep that in mind, too. Yeah, I'll be sure to let you know, man. All right. And then their second question is, what's the hardest thing that you did while making the Six Horrors 1 and 2 remakes? Did you say that, that was, the, was it the, the updates that you said were, like, really difficult? The updates were just difficult because I um, I primarily just had a time crunch. That's just like the the main thing. If there wasn't a time crunch, I don't think it would have been too difficult. But that was like like probably the hardest part is just having to deal with that with a major time crunch. 
for him, but it, it was rewarding, like in in retrospect, to do it. Gotcha. All right. Our next questions are from Gosh One One Two Eight. What made you join the Return to Freddy's community? Um, I've been a big fan of the series when I was um, when I was younger. Um, you know, in many ways, um, uh, Tier TF or like the Return to Freddy's in general is the main reason I uh, ever considered working on you know fan games in general. Um, the second game, I think, was the reason I uh, I uh, wanted to make uh, fan games in the first place, and you know, uh, it was uh, in many ways like an honor to me at the time to have been able to work with him at the at that point. Uh, despite the differences I have with the, the series creator, uh, I think it's Tyler Alstrom, or I don't know if he's uh, gone by something different now. But you know, I it was an honor for me because he was a major inspiration of mine. Um, at the, at that point in time, and you know, to have my work, I could work to work with him on his project was something that you know I would have never imagined in my wildest dreams. Um, you know, despite you know what issues we may have, um, but in, in it was like 2018, I kind of got a bit disconnected with it, um, and then I wanted to kind of come back to the community because over my time, I had a lot of content that I had just lying around that he gave me that he never really had much of an interest with releasing, such as like uh, stuff for Frank Burtz, uh, the Rod Slug game, uh, you know, a lot of canceled projects of his that he just never uh, bothered, you know, getting out the door. And I was like, I felt, you know, these people should at least have a chance to play it. So I wanted to try my best to just release as much content that I had acquired, you know, from my time. You know, obviously I think he, He's probably all right with it because I mean I, I can't really ask him now because we're, we're no longer in contact with each other. But I just wanted to kind of try to get to know the community a lot, you know, because uh, I think it was important to me to kind of understand, you know, because I was at one point uh, a owner of the series, if you will, you know, as coined by him, and I wanted to kind of interact with the community because I thought it would be interesting to hear what they thought. Uh, obviously, I don't. Much, very much interact with the community uh, anymore because I've kind of grown past uh, the Return to Freddy's, you know, because it's, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, it, it, it happened a long time ago. Um, I think it, there's not really much I could say now. I, I think I've given out as much as I could. Uh, but I am, uh, but regardless of the differences I could have with some stuff in the community, I'm very thankful for, you know, the time I had in it. And, you know, I am, um, I'm very thankful for the time I've had in it, you know, and I'm thankful that the community has shown me a very much a level of respect and, you know, during my time. And, you know, I, it, it's very, uh, I'm very thankful for it because, you know, it, it was a series that I was a fan of for a long time. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's something that I want to just, uh, like, I think it's just more or less my, my mind. So it's just that I'm very thankful for what it's done for me and, um, you know, the opportunities it could have given me. And like, um, you know, it's it's just a, it's just a part of my life that, you know, I, I enjoyed for a period of time. Uh, but, you know, it's uh, even though I've moved past it, you know, I'm thankful for it, but that period of time because, you know, that's kind of what helped make me into what I am today. So, you know, I'm just very thankful for what the community's done for me and for so many of, you know, the people I knew. And I'm thankful for the game itself, too. You know, despite, you know, it, it being a varying quality, of course, you know, by modern standards, you know, it's it's the reason a lot of, like, my friends, you know, my close associates are not even gotten into making FNAF fan games in the first place. So I think it's important to recognize, you know, no matter how poor the game may be today it's still important to recognize that you know it's it's very much the reason that a lot of people i knew are even still making fan games today and i'm very thankful for it yeah gotcha all right this next question is what is your favorite movie oh um, I could give like maybe a top five. I think a like a definitive favorite has always been hard with me. Um, I've been watching a lot 
lot of um, movies with Arnold in it, so I can name a couple of my favorite Arnold films. Uh, stuff just like Terminator 2, um, like uh, I love Terminator 2, uh, Last Action Hero, uh, Jingle All the Way, uh, End of Days was a good one. Uh, I think there's a, I mean, in terms of like other movies, though, I think I, I very much like uh, my favorite horror film of all time is The Shining. It's like my favorite horror that's a, film. That's a good pick. That's a good movie. Um, like, it's it's one of my favorite, like, horror films. It's, it's definitely a major inspiration for a lot of my, you know, the series work I do. And it's like, um, you know, it's it's just something I, I really like uh, to do. Uh, like, it's like, it's a film I occasionally watch every few years. Um... But, you know, like, it's one of my favorite horror flicks I've seen. Um, but, yeah, no, like, uh, I think a definitive favorite is just something that's a bit hard. Because I, I can never come up with, like, what's my my, my most favorite film. Because that could always change. Like, I, I'm, I have a hard time making up my mind. But, you know, I think this, there's a lot of films that I really lo love. Um, but I think, like, my... In terms of, like, horror, like, I think I, I know my all-time pick is just The Shining. It's just my favorite movie. Like, in terms of, like, horror... It's just, it's a really good movie. Yeah, agreed. It's a very good movie. I would say my favorite movie is probably Avengers: Infinity War. That's probably 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 my my favorite just movie in general. I'm not a big horror movie guy. I uh, I've, I've never really because I'll play. I'm kind of the weirdo that doesn't mind horror games, but when I play horror or listen to uh, you know listen play watch horror movies, I just they they hit me different and like. Uh, when I was younger, whenever I'd watch like a horror movie, I'd have a lot of trouble sleeping, to say the least. And I wouldn't say that's the same nowadays, but I just I've just never been a fan of horror movies. But I do love Halloween. Um, that is a, a franchise that I do enjoy quite a bit. And uh, the original Halloween, 1978, that's a great movie. And Halloween 2018 is a is a good movie too. That's one of my one of my favorite recent horror movies. Um, but yeah, I'd say Avengers. I got at some point see Halloween. I got at some point see Halloween because I've never watched the. There's, I'm kind of in a weird bubble. Like I've, I've, I would occasionally watch new stuff, but I'm a, it takes me a bit to kind of like really want to get a drive to properly watch something. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I do got to see Halloween at some point. I thought it was a really good movie. Yeah, yeah, it is. Hey, the original is great. Uh, it, a lot of the movies in the series are hit or miss, but the yeah, Halloween 2018 is, is a really good sequel, and uh, Halloween Kills is not very good, uh, and Halloween Ends is awful. Um, but yeah, I'd say watch the original and Halloween 2018. Those are those are pretty good back to back. <laughs> All right, the next question is uh, why do you call yourself Toonster? And I think you explained that uh, before at the yeah. beginning of this. And then uh, the last question is how did you find YouTube? Um, I kind of found it a bit on a whim uh, back in, like, I think it was like 2008 or something like that. I, I've been a long time viewer for a uh, very long time. I didn't make a YouTube account properly until 2015, but I've been a watcher of YouTube for uh, many, many years. I, I, I've been like, I, I've, I've loved watching the site. I still do. There's a lot of stuff I like to watch on there, but you know, I've, I've, I've been on it for like it was a it was essentially like the hub where I would find anything like if I like whether it be like oh I can go on there to like just watch a funny YouTuber or if I really want to go into the weird territory you know back in the early days it was pretty easy to find you know like uh, if you want to find a copyrighted <laughs> fucking like a like a copyrighted like like TV show it's probably on there for like maybe like a day or two. All right, our next one is from Adriana Konska. Um... And again, I think I've established that I don't think English is Adriana's first language, so we will uh, I will bear with this. Um, the way that they word it is, uh, when did Tyler give you to make TRTF fan games? And I would assume what they mean to ask is, like, what did Tyler give you uh, to make, like, TRTF fan games, if you ever made any? Um... Well, I was going to have an involvement with TRTF 5 back in 2016. I was given the rights by the by the series creator at that time. And, uh, you know, because we were going to work on a revival of, of 5. And uh, 
I was given the models. I wasn't given a complete set of models. I was given um, maybe the rooms, but the rest of it we were kind of on our own. Um, which, uh, in hindsight, is actually a bit of a bad thing because um, we didn't really have that much to work with outside of like a few room models. And uh, we had we had the rooms and we had the MFA, which I think we got from. I think it was like Tyler's uh, brother. I think it was passed down from like a, another guy who was from Tyler's brother. Um, but ultimately, we didn't work on that much because we just had a lot of internal issues with it, so we just never even made it. Um, but then, the, then the ownership got passed a few times to people such as um, I think uh, uh, Feline Animations, who I think works on the original location now, and um, and then they. I went from the original location to working on, and then there's a, it got past um, my, my, an old friend of mine, TSM, uh, who I don't think is around anymore. And then uh, I think to Bio Ninja, which uh, I think he had like the furthest one going on with it, but it, ne it never got made. Because uh, I don't know what happened. He's, he's kind of left the internet for after that. But like, uh, yeah, that's that's the most that I was given. I, I wish I was given a bit more because nowadays he just doesn't have any of the photo files anymore. But um, yeah, that was that was as much as I was given. So it was a bit, admittedly, a, a little bit challenging to work with it because we didn't we didn't really have that much in hindsight. Okay, next questions are from Tong. Tong Kui Koi. I don't know how that's Kui. I'm not, I don't know how how I'm how that's pronounced. Uh, Tong, let me know if I got any of those right in the comments. Uh, their first question is, what is your favorite game that you've made? Um, the Six Wars Two update, no question. That's like my. I, I think when it comes to anybody that I can talk about with it, they typically have said that that's like probably like my like my best work in terms of like. Like obviously, I'm not like the like the most skilled dev or anything like that. I'm very much like I'm kind of a bit like contrast when it comes to like a lot of these bigger guys. But when it comes to like the like six or two, I think for most people, they've kind of said that that's probably like my finest work, and it's also the one I'm just the most proud of because I think I think I can show that to anybody, and there anybody seems to like it, which I'm I'm happy about. So yeah, I think definitely six or is Two's update is probably like my favorite game that I've been, and I, maybe the original one as well because that's like my favorite. Like the Six Wars Two in general, it's been my favorite the Six Wars series, like in like since the beginning. So I think that would be probably my favorite. Gotcha. And then our next question is, what inspired you to make some of your games? Um, I think it was just a lot of um, a lot of just kind of get, gaining inspiration from the creators I saw at the time. Uh, with people such as like BFP, uh, uh, Scribby, uh, Ricky G, uh, uh, is it, uh, Tom uh, Tom Eldridge, I think, the creator of Iggy's Funhouse was another point. There's it was mainly just inspiration for creators I saw at the time when I was growing up. You know, like when I first started making uh, no fan projects at the time. You know, it's like my sort of my main point of being like like kind of figuring out. You know, what do I want to make? How good do I think it'll be? You know, I just kind of like figure. I just kind of like to play stuff to primarily get inspiration. And when it comes to fan games, I play a lot. I used to play a lot of them. I don't play as many anymore. But you know, back in the day, I I would just try to get inspiration from you know fan games. And nowadays, I just get inspiration from you know uh, games in general, which is I think probably been my main thing. I played a lot of like horror games in general. That's been like my main inspiration you know for you know making work that i i do gotcha you mentioned scribby dang i haven't heard that name in years it, like do where even is he is did he leave the internet or is he still around um he's kind of uh abandoned stuff i'm still in pretty active contact with him i think i spoke with him like earlier uh today he, he popped by a call i was in you know i'm, I'm still in contact with him uh he's just kind of uh, left it all aside because he's just kind of got his own uh, thing to figure out. I guess for the most part, uh, I'd love to see him do something again because he's he's been a friend of mine for years. Um, I've been a friend of uh, I've been a fan of his since the Fazbear Return series. I I would love to see him do something again in the future. 
uh, but you know, he's, he's just had stuff that's been going on in his life. So hopefully at some point he'll be back to making something again, but you know, I'm still in active contact with him and he's, he's, he's been doing okay. It's just, you know, he's just got stuff going on this all. Yeah, that's understandable. That that's nice that he's still around. I just I haven't heard from him in years, so I just wanted to don't want to check in on him. But it's good that he's doing well. Yeah. And then uh, Tong's last question is: What's your favorite FNAF fan game? Um, I did I did like it's another kind of case of it. I did do a um a sort of a top five of some of my favorites. Um, uh, one of them would be uh, Kenny's remastered. Uh, um, my friend, uh, my friend Namo Case game three minutes at Bill Gates four cent mansion that he bought the MySpace auction. The sequel. It's a really good. It's a long title. It's a really good game. I really like it. Um, uh, I think uh, Warriors Three is one of my favorites as well. Yes, um, good one, good one. I'm trying to think what else I named. Uh, on, I'd have to. I'd have to probably go back to get the comment, but I'm a, I'm a bit. I'm trying to kind of think of it as I go. But that's like a, that's like some of my favorites uh, out outside of that. It's one of, I there's a lot of like really good fan games I've played over the years that I really like. Yeah, um, Wario's three. I think I've told people is like that. That is like one. I I would say if I had like a definitive top five list of FNAF games, which I I probably will do another one of those on the channel at some point. Uh, Wario's 3 has been on like my top five for years and especially after the update in 2020 like that it, it is it, that's a, that is a classic right there I still love the way it's done it like especially during its time like it like the the prospect of going to different rooms each night and each night having a different mechanic like that was unheard of at the time so yeah it, it was like so unique at the time and like yeah that, that it's such a good game i, I love warrior's three to death um so yeah, no, definitely it, big agree there yeah no so, like a lot of the warriors games are like some of my favorites i haven't played the um the most recent uh warriors game because i kind of around the time it came out was when i sort of got a bit disconnected with the uh with the fan game community uh but it's definitely like um uh, the warriors games like stuff like uh warriors one uh, I, I'm a big fan of uh, three and four. Those are my my my, my two contenders for my, my favorites. Uh, two and this update is actually I think two kind of refined itself a bit more. Two had a goal up. Update. I agree. Yeah. Um, Origins. I I hate to say it. Origins for me was kind of like the one that was a bit uh, forgettable for me. Not that it was bad. I think there's some elements to it I really like. I like the the usage of the free realm for it, but I think. Typically, I, I kind of forget that it's sort of the fourth game, if you really think about it. Yeah. Um, but it, 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 I think they're all like pretty decent games. I don't think there's ever been one that's like a genuine like miss. It's just that you know, if there's one that's like not as great, it's just you know, it's just kind of forgettable. But I think it's definitely like some of the most refined in terms of gameplay. Like I know graphics is a bit of a, a hot point of contention when it comes to anybody like in the wider scene with the series, but. Um, I think in general, uh, the gameplay for it uh, is like pretty much like top notch. Like half the time, it's it's definitely one of my favorites for sure. Oh yeah, I've never had an issue with the graphics. I feel like the graphics actually add to the creep factor. It looks like it's uncanny, kind of seeing uh, a sort of realistic like area because it's like I mean he obviously went to you know google images and got pictures of different places to use but it's again it, it like especially when like you gray it out or make it like the color scheme that it is in the cameras it i think it makes it a lot creepier so i think if it uh if you were to like remaster it in like 4k or something i don't think it would be as creepy so i appreciate the way it looks yeah. like uh i think any of the um i think the stuff like the the, like the, the art style in general for it when it whenever it gets changed it i think it usually has a bit of an issue when it comes to that i know the most uh the most controversial uh, example of it was with the uh was with the 64th gamers interpretation of it back in the day uh which i i kind of forget sometimes it happened but um you know it's that's probably like the most controversial example of an art style change because that one really didn't like quite blend together as well 
Uh, but I feel like you could definitely experiment with it and maybe make a bit of a slight transition to it in three. You just gotta do it right. That's the problem. Yeah, and maybe somebody will do that one day. Who knows? Yeah. All right, our next question is from Jemada Formations. If you had the chance to create an actual Blue's Clues FNAF fan game, would you? You know, that's something I've actually given some thought to. Um, and I've talked about it a bit beforehand, like, with some people I knew. Uh, no, I've given it some thought. It's just the problem is I haven't seen that show in years. And, um... Uh, I feel like it'd be kind of awkward to kind of watch it now. I just feel kind of awkward watching, like, you know, like, shows like that now. Because, you know, it's been so long. And, you know, I'm, I'm, just, I'm like, I'm a pretty old guy now, you know, since when I first watched it. But, you know, it's like, I've given the idea of it some genuine thought. Um, I, I think, like, uh, that's probably more likely than me doing a, a new mainline installment to the original series, I would say, because at least that I could get some headroom into it, but maybe still inject some of that flair to it. I, I just don't want it to be like, like a like a really like cheap like 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 sort of like serious remake or something like that. I don't want it to be like that. But I mean, I, I've given that idea some genuine thought, you know, right now, and you know, maybe it could happen. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. All right, next questions are from HW Shadow Mangle. Uh, how many games have you created? Dude, that's like probably the most like complex one. Because um, I, I occasionally forget the exact figures. Um, I mean, throughout my time, I've made so many of these. And a lot of them I could be generalized and being like, there'd be a period where I would just make a, like a boatload of these really low effort ones. Um, you know, just because I get bored and I think there's like a joke idea in mind that I think it's really funny. So I would just do like these really low effort uh, projects. And then I just kind of crank these out, like kind of like a machine at, at some points, it feels like. Um, but I made like maybe, if I want to say like in exact numbers, like actual like proper games, it'd probably be like maybe like 20, like 20 to 30 or so. Um, but like if we're going to like the like the crazy territory of like low efforts, it's like maybe like maybe like somewhere near close to fifth, like somewhere around there. Gosh, that's a lot. All right, and then uh, Shadow Mango's second question is, what is your favorite game? I guess his favorite game in general. Um, there's a there's a few of my favorites. Um, I could I'll give like a I'll give you a top five. Yeah, no specific out of like that outside of it, you know, just being like the main one. like I would say like if the surgeon simulator is one of my favorites. That's been one I played since I was young. Um it's if anything, it's the first game that got me into PC gaming in general. Um I think uh Metal Gear Solid 5 is one of my favorites. Um uh Alien Isolation, uh, Resident Evil 7. Yeah, that's a good game. Um, I think... Uh, I liked uh, Metal Gear Rising quite a bit. That one was really good. Um, I, like, uh, yeah, no, there's, there's a lot... I've played a lot of games. There's a lot of stuff in my Steam backlog I still gotta get through. Because I've I've had, like, maybe, like, 200 or so. And I've played through, like, maybe, like, 100. I, some of them I've, I haven't even probably finished yet still. Um... But no, the, I I definitely have been a big fan of stuff. Oh yeah, another one game I've, I'm a big fan of is stuff like uh, like Max Payne. Uh, Max Payne Two is like my favorite like uh, story driven game ever. Like that game is so good. And um, Manhunt is like probably like the most underrated uh, Rockstar game. Period. Like that's like that one's like such a good game. Like like atmosphere wise. Um, like I think the soundtrack in it is great. Um, it, it definitely, it's definitely not for the fan of art, of course. It's, it's a very, like, it's a bit of a graphic game. Uh, but it's a, it's a, it's a really good game. It's an extremely underrated Rockstar game. Um, it's definitely was a major inspiration for me for a lot of the soundtrack, uh, for some of my, the later or stuff. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of a lot of, like, work in general. I've just been, I've been just slowly trying to get through the backlog in, in general, but, like, 
I've got a lot of soft spots for a lot of games I've had, like growing up, you know, uh, stuff like, you know, like I, I played a lot of Gmod. I played TF2 was like my first online game, like I, in general. Like that's how I met people like back in the day because I, I had nothing else I could really use. But yeah, no, like um, those are like some of my favorites, I would say. Yeah, a lot of the ones that you uh, that you listed there, I, I'm a fan of as well. I know I, I really like uh, Resident Evil 7. That is, that is a great game. I'm, I'm looking forward, or I'm looking through all the uh, all the games I have on Steam to see if there is any that I, I played recently that I really enjoyed. Um, Bioshock, great game. I, I really like that. Uh, Bioshock Infinite is something I really like too. I know that like Bioshock Infinite was more of the uh, kind of like the black sheep of the Bioshock series, but I, I really, really like um, Bioshock Infinite, I, one of my favorites. And then Outlast. Yeah. Outlast will forever be a fantastic horror game to me. I love it so That's much. one I gotta play. And, like, I haven't played that one uh, properly. Uh, like, uh, for, for me, like, uh, like my my favorite all-time horror game is, like, for, like, like, Alien Isolation. It's, like, one of my favorite horror games. Is like, that one was, like, legitimately scary for me it's like it, it's so good it's such a good game yeah and then uh resident evil 4 of course that's that's a that's a good one really really recently, really good uh, game man like i really i recently did a a, a hardcore uh, a professional run in it i i completed it it was it was a task uh, but I felt so good after doing that. Like it, it was, it was legitimately great. It's one of my, it's definitely one of my favorites. Like in terms of combat, it, I think uh, there's, some, there's some aspects that are a bit dated. But if you use like a little like fan made tweak, uh, you don't really skip a beat with it. It still, it still feels like something you could play in a modern day like scenario. I feel like. Yeah, very, very, very good game. All right. Uh, where's a yep? Okay, all right. Our next one is from Mr. Corrupted. Do you plan on making other fan games? Um, that's definitely, um, I don't want to say like too much, of course, because I don't want to give like people false hope. Because I mean, I've been gone for a while, I don't want to like, um, I promise anything that I can't hold up to. But no, we, I always talk about doing stuff with people, I've been talking more and more with people from. You know my my dev team spinacher with uh with uh my, my good friends namo and i've been nugget who've been like my co-developers for years um which uh but I, I we talk about stuff all the time it's just that i've got a lot going on on my plate um and you know all of us just in general we have we have you know stuff going on so it's hard to kind of you know kind of plan out stuff you know for new projects but we always come up with ideas for stuff and I think I feel pretty certain that you know, you know, if the stars align, we'll do one. I mean, we did just do a, a new Finite at Sands game, a raw deal, which is our, I think, the first game we've done as a group in three years, which is crazy to think about. Um, but you know, I think uh, I'm I'm totally up for it. You know, just we just gotta have a good idea. You know, we gotta be in that, that mindset. Yeah, I gotta be in that drive. I would say. Yeah, absolutely. And then our next question is from Huayo Victor Almeida. Will there be a sequel to the joke game Five Nights at Sands? Uh, if you want that, uh, you could play the most recent game, uh, Raw Deal, which came out last month. Uh, it's on uh, the Spinature Game Jolt. So if you want to check it out, you could. Uh, you can. Uh, it's it's one of it's definitely a. It may be a bit of a de, a bit of a departure for some, but I think it's I think it's still a really good game. Uh, I'm proud of the work that uh me and the rest of the crew did and i don't want to take all the credit for it because it was very much a team project but I'm, I'm very proud of what we were able to do together I'm, I'm glad that we were able to get together to do another project you know after so long and i feel like it, it felt really nice to do that again for sure yeah i'll, I'll have to give that uh, a shot as well I'll, I'll look into it all right and then our last question on the community tab is from nick 3535 version 2 what got toonster inspired for five nights at sands um i was like f like three like four in the morning uh, i was in a call with uh nam okay and we were talking about um uh we were i think we were just like looking at stuff on like game Joel, and we found like like this game called uh, five nights 
at Sands or whatever. We just found like just occasional like random like games or something. There's a bit of a story to it. I, I kind of forget occasionally. Um, but uh, basically, we had an idea because there was a bit of a backstory behind the game specifically and the person behind it. You know, because we thought it would be funny to kind of you know poke a little bit at it. And so we made this game. You know, to come up with a title for it. So I thought it'd be funny if we came up with Fight Night at Sands. Uh, and we just kind of made it in about three hours at like around like four in the morning. And when we dropped it at like 9 a.m., we were like all tired by the end of it. Um, <laughs> it was really funny because this is like, this is like the first time we properly, uh, I mean, we've, we've collaborated, of course, before with, um, with the Six Horror stuff, but I think it's a joke project. It was like the first time we really did something like quite like that. And it definitely spawned uh, a lot of projects out of that, outside of that, you know, uh, for for us specifically, because we would all make these sort of like lower effort, lower tier uh, fan game projects where we wouldn't put like that much into it, but you know it'll, it'll still be funny to walk look at. Cause, you know, it's it looks low effort, but you know that that's kind of the joke. Uh, but that's kind of like where it came from. It's just we just got bored at four in the morning, and we're just like, you know, why not, why not just make this? Because I mean, it's not like we're gonna go to bed anytime soon, so let's just do something with it. All right. Well, we're moving on to our Twitter questions. We've got a good bit over here. Our first one is from Maximum Elevator. When are you going to rant next? Um, you know, uh, I have a few. I've had ideas for rant videos. It's definitely one of my favorite series to do. I've just had like, um, and really, I've just had a bit of a tricky time with you know, like IRL situations and all that. Um, there is one I have prepared. Um, that I recorded around the time of like, uh, I did a rant on uh, CSGO, it was a, I guess a bit of a, 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 bit of a goof, a bit of a gaff. Um, but I never released it because I, I just didn't feel it was that good. I'll probably just drop it at some point, but it, it, it's pretty much done. I just, I just didn't feel like, like dropping it because I, I, I just felt like it was a bit weird, I guess. But I, I do have like more prepared it's just weird you know <laughs> i gotta get life stuff situated but i'm i'm totally for doing another one of those i love doing gotcha all right our next questions are from fusion 505 first one is how's the day going uh pretty good it's been a bit of a slow day i watched the summer game fest uh, it wasn't uh, all of that exciting there's a few things that were good i like the new uh the new Sonic game was pretty cool, um, but you know, outside that was a bit, eh, but it, it was, it's been a good day. I, I'd like to say. Okay, gotcha. And then the second question is, what inspired the Six Horrors games? I can't remember if you answered that earlier, but kind of give us a refresher. Oh, uh, uh, basically, it was 2016. I was working on. Uh, the uh, one analyst night MLGs five, uh, but I faced a bit of a dilemma with it being, uh, you know, uh, I was taking the games a bit too seriously, going in a bit of a, a serious oriented direction, uh, which didn't fit with the game because you know it's MLG montage parody, it's Illuminati, it's, it's a joke game essentially. So it's like you know why not just make a serious game? So I canceled that game and then, you know, just came up with ideas for a new game on its own. And that's what became of Six Horrors, essentially. All right. Our next question is uh, from Elijah Games. In three words, what would be the best advice for a starting game developer? And if you can't think of three, you can say whatever. Um, I think the, the limit, I, I, I think it's hard for me to come up with three words exactly. But I could, I could try to give some advice to some people. Uh... Uh, going in, I've never been much of an advice guy because that's something I, I, because I mean when I when I first started, um, I essentially worked with no with no one. Um, when I uh, worked started working on fan games back in 2015, I did. Um, I the only people I knew were people from Steam because that was the only other account I had. I would go on TF2 to meet people. And, you know, that's, that's kind of the most I had. And, you know, like, um, I think from that, I managed to kind of work my way into finding, you know, people from, you know, the, the lower part of the FNAF community, such as, like, um, you know, uh, like, not like a lower part, I'm going to say lower part, like, in terms of, like, like, 
you know, nowadays, I mean, some of these people are well known now, but, you know, at the time, like people like such as Scribby, you know, um, I kind of like go into like Skype chats, you know, try to meet people, send people yeah. friend requests, you know, that's how I would meet people. So I would just say like, you know, to learn from, and also I, I learned a lot from, you know, being able to, you know, decompile, you know, works in general, because a lot, because Click Team stuff and all of that doesn't really have the most definitive tutorials, nor did it really at the time. So it's just like um, how to learn what more advanced like techniques was to learn from, you know, like decompiling source code, which of course, you know, you know, do it at your own discretion, of course. Um, but like, you know, I learned a lot from, you know, looking at code and you're just trial and error, you know, trying to figure out, you know, what works, what doesn't work, you know. Uh, you know what fights you know go on. You know if if something happens, you know just don't don't get don't get um don't get too like uh, I would say like my another thing is just to never get too cocky. You know with it because that's uh to keep yourself at like a bit of a minimum like playing field. Like you know don't have like too strong of an ego. Like you could you could be able to you know toot your own horn every once in a while. But you know don't don't like you know get so ahead of yourself. Like as a like as a creator, you know, and believe that you know, like um, I think you could genuinely try to figure out like your own pathway into you know making something if you just you know talk to people, you know, uh, learn from you know whatever error you have from something you do, and then never get ahead of yourself. Don't don't get too cocky. You no, know, don't get too full of yourself. You know, just keep yourself at a minimum playing field. You know, keep your keep your friends close. You know. Uh, just you know be smart about it you know and i think you can you, i think anybody can really try to figure out because I, I think it's way easier to meet people in the finance community than it ever has been because when it, i remember in 2015 it was a bit tricky for me to find people in the fan game community but there's so many like creators out there now you know from when i first started uh, that it's easy to find like like newer people than it used to be i think that's a great thing if you need to find you know a friend to talk to you know to, to help you with your work there's so many options out there and i think you just, you just got to talk to people you know, i think that's the main thing yeah. and just you know network and then you could find your way up from that yeah all right our next questions are from salta 93 uh how did you start working with tyler ostrom and i think you i think you did you talk about how you started working with him i can't remember if you touched on that or not um I didn't talk about the specific. I mainly talked about how I got into the tier T, tier tier five, which mainly. But I can talk about a bit about how I met him. Um, I mainly met him back in 2015 when um, I sent him a friend request on Game Jewel, and that was how we kind of got in contact with a bit for a bit. We did lose contact after some time because like um, he didn't really know me all that well, and like uh, you know, I I think it was just like a case of you know. Is I was more of a fan at the time, um, but you know I knew people that knew him, and I was like, um, you know, I wanted to try to get to talk to him because he was, you know, a lot of he's like a major inspiration of mine, and I think it was like twenty, like early twenty sixteen, was when I, um, I think I properly got back into contact with him because uh, I did meet up with him a few times, you know, with meetups and all that, but, you know, because he was an, an idol of mine, admittedly, I would get a little nervous, you know, it was, it's my, is my idol in the room, I was a little bit nervous, because I was a young kid, um, but, you know, I got to, I probably got to meet up with him, and then I think around 2016 was when we probably, like, got in contact with each other, and then, you know, we were trying to get work on, I would send him stuff on my work, he would send me stuff from his work, we would talk a lot, and then ultimately we were going to try to, at one point, you know, get our games, you know, connected with each other um, and all that. You know, it was, it was an interesting process. It was it was cool to work with them at the time, you know, as, although I may have not had like a, a significant involvement with it as I remember it. But it was a really cool thing to, you know, have, you know, some involvement with the games, uh, albeit admittedly kind of minor by the end of it, you know. Gotcha. And then he asks, how are you today? Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. All right. Next one is from uh, you. You, I, you know, I always thought that it was pronounced uh, Nobok, but you said it was uh, Namoke. That's how. That's how his name uh, is. Yeah, it was Namoke. Yeah. I thought the whole time it was Nomok. All right, that's a revelation. <laughs> uh, all right. So yeah, next one is from Namoke. When is Five Nights at Bonnie's Four coming out? 
<laughs> you know, if you wish hard enough, uh, now okay, you might do it. You, yeah, yeah, might might happen. You gotta, you gotta pray. You gotta use your willpower, and you might get what you need. Gotcha. All right, next one is from Yep Multi. Can you make seven horrors? Yeah. You know, that's, a, that's, a, that's an ambitious question. Uh, you know, it's like, uh, this, well, I mean, technically there is there's seven in each game. Uh, I think there's like, I think typically there's like eight, I think. I, I occasionally forget. It's been a while since I've played them. But it's like, there's like eight, I think there's eight horrors if you think about it. Because it's like it's like I think it's like eight shifts like throughout like a majority of them except five and then, except, except three for whatever reason I don't know why three only had five I think I think I just forgot to add another hour or something I don't know. All right, our next one is from Gilbert. Is Five Night at Sands your proudest creation? You know, I think in terms of modern joke games, it's probably like the one I, um, it's probably the one I like the most. Uh, it's kind of more in line with, uh, you know, my style of comedy nowadays, I would say. Um, like, I think it's just like, that's the one that's just kind of the most in line with, you know, like my modern like, sense of humor, you know, what I think is funny. So I think that's, in terms of like that sort of style, I think that's like probably like one of my favorites for sure. All right. And then he says, Bazinga. 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 All right, our next ones are from Ace Kid seventy seven. Uh, any plans for six horrors? I think you've you've kind of gone over that already, right? Um, I could do a brief uh, sort of thing, you know, because I'm I'm fine with doing. Uh, I would say anything's possible because we do talk about doing uh, occasional new stuff for it. I mean, I do have a lot of. Um, I have a lot of canceled stuff from the time in between 2020 that I, I plan to uh, trinkle out uh, like pretty like soon. I, I've been kind of stalling on it for a while, but you know, I think probably like pretty soon, like maybe like this month, I'll probably try to do some more, uh, some like some drops for some of the older uh, content that I haven't properly released yet. Uh, because there's a lot, there's a lot I could talk about with it. I've just been trying to figure out the right way to, um, like discuss it in general um but i i do intend on dropping more of the content from those scans because there's a lot to the uh the modern like updates definitely that I, I could talk about for sure all right and his next one is how big is five nights at obama five uh no it's a it's a pretty big game um i i've been I don't know the specifics because I, I mean, I, I actually know I, I do know a bit of it because I talked with people from the team about it, and um, you know, there's there's definitely quite a bit to it. Um, I think that uh, I'm, I'm very proud of some of the, the work that that team does. I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to the game when it drop comes out, and I hope that the people who are fans of the series. Uh, will like it too because I think it's uh, they're they're all really funny people over there at the at uh, Obama Productions. Some of my greatest, one of the greatest people I, I I've, I've met. So you know they're really funny people. I uh, I'm, I hope that you'll like it. You know the, when it comes out, I guess. All right, and then he says next rant video when being its peak. And you mentioned earlier that you uh, you're kind of still working on your next rant right yeah no i there's there's a few in the pipeline uh well there's one i have done which i'll i'll probably drop at some point uh i just think uh i just want to kind of just do run it through a bit to make sure it's like any good uh but you know i think in terms of new rants uh i'll i'll definitely do some more uh, it's just like it's just a bit of a complex uh, situation right now so i just haven't been thinking a lot of focus right? but i do want to do some more yeah all right, and the last one is, uh, what are you working on that's not six horrors? Um, mainly collaborative works. That's like a lot of it. Um, during my downtime in 2021, I mainly kind of uh, went from uh, working on games to being primarily shifted to just being a voice actor for a lot of stuff, like such as um, I did uh, lines for the character El Pablo in uh, Finance with Obama 4, which is a character I came up with a while back, you know, uh, but, uh, 
uh, the most like notable role I've taken up recently was um, for the recent Radiance project, uh, Oblius Cast, where I voiced the character Corruptus, uh, which uh, I think is probably like my most notable work uh, because, um, well, uh, I initially did the character of Corruptus back in uh, 2016 from an, an old friend of mine, uh, Faithful Windows, his game, uh, Abandoned Discovery Island. Um, but I was contacted by the team leader at the time, uh, I think it was Nocturna, to do some lines for it. Um, and I, I did them back in 2020, and the game didn't come out for a couple of years, I, I think, it, but it came out in 2022. Um, and I was surprised to see how much of a... I saw a lot of fan art of the character, which I think was a bit surreal to me, because, I mean, I mean, to be clear, it's not my character, of course. Uh, Corruptus is a character from... Uh, I believe it's one of the Slime Beast stories. I, I never read much into it besides the original uh, Abandoned by Disney. Um, but uh, Corruptus was definitely a... It's weird to have a character you voice uh, have seeing so many people make, uh, you know, fan-related works based off the character. And, you know, it's it's interesting to see to me, like, how much that, uh, that character kind of resonated with people, you know, to an extent, you know, to make, you know, fan work like that. And, you know... It definitely was a nice feeling to know that there's people that you know really liked uh like the character uh well specifically i hope i hope that my performance for it for people I, I hope that they liked it uh, uh you know it's like uh i never really talked about the fact that i even did it you know to be fair with you so i'm sure that there's probably people that didn't even know i voiced the character um but you know i'm, I'm glad that to have done it for the game uh, i think it's really cool to see people make their fan art regarding the character um but yeah, no, I, I mainly did a bunch of voice acting stuff during my downtime. Um, but outside of it, I haven't really been doing like too much lately. But you know, during my downtime, I was really trying to get into like, kind of doing a lot more voice acting stuff. Definitely. All right. Our next question is from Fruity Request Twelve, Mister Toonster Games. Thoughts on Obama Productions? Oh yeah, uh, well, well, Chris, uh, you know, like. Um, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Obama Productions. I'm a big fan of the team at there. You know, they're all wonderful people. Um, shout out to, to all of them over there. You know, all, all great people. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's some of the some of the funny funniest people I've come across. You know, uh, during my time. You know, it's, I'm glad to have have interacted with them. They're, they're all great people for sure. All right. Next questions are from Grandpa Jerry. Any plans for a new Six Horrors game? I think you you mentioned that before. Um, yeah. And uh, is there a reason that you decided to come back? Um. Well, for one, I think it was just like I never intended to be gone for like as long as I was uh, expecting to. I'd always had an intention to, to um, come back. Because, uh, you know, the fact that I was gone for three years was never intentional. I just had a lot of um, a lot of things to, to work, uh, process because uh, admittedly, you know, throughout my time, you know, doing stuff, you know, I'm not exactly a perfect person for it. But like, you know, you know I had to kind of take some time to like really reevaluate you know, my situation. And like... Um, it's definitely something I wanted to uh, think about you know, more closely. But, you know, I, I just wanted to do it because, like, um, you know, I I felt like it was, it's was it been long enough. You know, I feel like people needed a, an explanation. You know, I just wanted to do something again. So I've been sort of out of it for a few years. But, um, you know, it's uh, it's been very humbling to me to, to kind of be able to come back to an extent and you know, still help people check out what you do. Um, because I know it's been a long time that's something i i definitely know for certain it's been way too long it's been like almost three three years really and a lot has changed since then you know um but you know i'm very humbled to still see that people to an extent you know still very much you know care about you know what the hell is he doing because uh, i'm sure and i i very much do apologize you know to my community for you know the fact that you know i i sort of left everybody without any notice because that that wasn't right, you know. No matter what the circumstances, that is right. Uh, I think people should have been owed an explanation, you know, from the beginning. And you know, it was never my intention to be gone for as long as I've been. Um, but I've very much determined now that uh, the the ride ain't over yet. I very much intend to to get back 
actively into making stuff once again. It's just going to be a bit of a slow process, if you will. But I very much am determined that uh, I'm not ready to give this up just yet. So I'm I'm going to keep getting back into doing stuff more frequently and just you know make new uh, content in general. Get this that because I feel like I just need to do that. You know, because it's, it's been it's been too long. I just feel like there's a need or a drive to finally like do it, and I I think I kind of got it now. So it's like I'm. I'm very much looking forward to what the future, you know, may hold for that, you know, specifically. Our last question on Twitter is why are you so hardcore and awesome? You know, I just, uh, you know, I'm just built of too much, uh, built of too much swag. You know, I think it's like the main thing. Um, you know, I'm built, built too strongly. I, I, you know, I'm built, you know, swole. You know, and I think uh, that's just the main thing. It, it, nobody can, you know, touch my swag if you really think about it. So I think that's the main thing. All right. And then we have a few more questions on Discord. So we'll go through these. Our first one on Discord is from Sean Games. Uh, what led you to make Phoebe Neats at Glee's Clees? Uh, like, uh, like, is it talking like if I'm going to make a new installment for it? Um, um, or well, no, I think he's like, saying like what what led you to make like please please. Um, it was very much just kind of like um, you know back in 2015, you know it was kind of funny to go back into the best section and you know essentially you know to be very blunt, you know go dumpster diving, you know go into the very bottom, you know see what you see what's there. And, you know, there's stuff like, there used to be stuff like such as Five Nights at Fatties, which was like the, at one point, the lowest rated game on the site. It was like, it was that, it was like the, the worst one. But it was like, it felt so comical to me, you know, some lower end ones. Because I mean, like, um, I mean, there's obviously bad fan games, you know, that's, that's just kind of a given. All right. Next one is from Robster. Feeb Neats at Blee's Clees oh, Plus oh. when? Uh... You know, if you wish hard enough, you know, it could happen. You know, I, 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 uh, I think the most you probably get is the remaster I did in 2016. All right. Next question is from Weed Chips. What do you think of the six horror series looking back on it? Did you have fun making the games and look back fondly on them, or do you regret having made them? Um, there's some regrets. Um, I would say there's obviously there's regrets with a lot of stuff I work on because, you know, I've worked on so many like projects, you know, obviously there's going to be, you know, the occasional one or two project, you know, I'm not that proud of. And, you know, I would say like the one I'm not the most proud of is I'm not proud of the original Six Souls 3, for example. Um, but do I look back on the series like fondly? Of course I do. You know, it's in some ways it's, it's kind of like, you know, kind of my child, if you will. You know, it's a lot of it's like very much a, a series that you know i kind of hold dear you know because i had a lot of fun working on it uh i've met so many amazing people from it you know having to get to work with people such as you know jay Laria, uh one of one of the closest friends i've had you know although i've kind of lost a bit of touch you know where i i still hold them to a very high regard um working with like uh with uh, Mew marissa or the thanks of wolf the creator of fangs you know a very big inspiration of mine um and you know of course to work with people such as you know namo k and ivan nugget which i think have been by the like most talented like people i've seen like throughout my time making stuff in general like like namo k especially like it's like one of my like, most talented people i mean all of them are talented don't get me wrong i'm not trying to like put down anybody who worked on it um of course but, but like i think they very much like the, the series very much uh holds a place in my heart for me yeah. because it, it means a lot to me so it's like of course i'm gonna like look at it you know be like maybe like a couple yeah. years down the line be like yeah no i i had a good time making them you know despite the faults i've had with it and you know it's um it's very much something i'm very you know i'm, I'm still very much proud of you know of my time doing it you know i i wouldn't change that for anything All right, next one's from uh, Jonathan slash Morg. Uh, what inspired you to make games in general, and how was your journey and learning game development throughout your life? And what was your first reaction to Markiplier playing Please Please? Um, 
I'll go through them. I, I can kind of explain a bit of the history. So I got a, I kind of got into uh, game dev around the time of FNAF. Uh, I know I in, initially discovered FNAF when I was um, I was in a uh, a TF2 trade server. Um, a good buddy of mine, which I haven't spoken to in a long time, uh, Irish God, uh, they had uh, talked to me about the uh, the fact that there's this new cool horror game coming out called uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. And I was like, um, you know, I thought that was great. And we, you know, because we were close at the time, though we sh we we shared a pretty close bond of it. I remember there was like the, some of the ones from the PewDiePie bit, such as like, um, was it Five Nights at Weed? You know, stuff like that. And like, you know, Finance the Illuminati, you know, by, uh, by Gavin Manning. You know, people like that, you know, um, there was a lot of like, uh, uh, a lot of just like, I felt inspired to do it from stuff like that. Um, but you know, the one that definitely was the one I kept the most track of is I wanted to do something like, uh, I wanted to follow up on the return to Freddy's because that was the one I was the most uh, excited for. Um, and like, uh, I, that's the reason I even made my game show account in the first place. And I would say, like, my the hardest part was just kind of trying to get a basic um, understanding of, um, like, programming at the time from, you know, kind of learning from, uh, like, learning from decompiling stuff and whatnot. You know, just trying to kind of understand like TM. But once I kind of got the hang of it, you know, it's, it's a fairly easy, like, engine in general. Um, and, of course, like, when it comes to the Belize Cleese question, you know, I'm very much... Uh, I'm very much thankful to Mark. You know, I was I was shocked when that happened because it was like, holy crap, this guy played my game. Like, oh my god, this does not feel real. And it's like, um, no, it wasn't. It was an insane thing to me. I'm still very grateful about it for sure. All right, our next one is from Nintendo Boy. What would you say are your favorite and least favorite characters from your games? Um. I would say um, that would be. Uh, I would say like one of my favorites was uh, Golden, like Golden Tuny Suit from the Six Horrors Two update. Uh, that or uh, t that or Tammy from the uh, original uh, Six Horrors One update. And um, my least favorite is probably Tammy from. Six Horrors Woken because I don't like the design that I gave her at the time because, I don't know, it, it, it wasn't very good. Uh, kind of drove a lot of the scariness out of it because I was trying to be much more comical with it, which kind of took you out of that. And I just, I thought the design, looking back at it, it's just really, really weird. And I, I, I don't really like the design for it back then. But like nowadays, I like the, the character much more. But it took me a few years to really like it again because I just... I felt kind of embarrassed by the design choice that was given for it at the time. Alrighty, and last but not least, we have Mr. Hoffels. Although Bleez Cleese is obviously an amazing and already amazing and artistically powerful crap post, have you ever considered it and ever have you ever considered it or ever wanted to enhance every aspect of it and make it a true work of art? Um honestly. There's nothing I really want to do with them. Um, I mean, I've occasionally thrown around the idea of uh, doing a sequel. I think just for the problem is, is that I'm. It's been a few years since I made them. Uh, for one, uh, I made the six, uh, not the the Police Police series when I was 12 years old, and currently I'm 19. A lot has happened to my voice since then. I've I've aged quite a bit. I just don't think it would be that funny if. Uh, a, a nearly 20 year old is screaming into the, the mic, you know, really up close. It doesn't really hit the same way. Um, but like, um, I think the only thing I would want to do is I'd probably just want to change the ending to Please Please 4, because I thought the ending in that is like really stupid. I don't know what I was going for with that, but I think the, you know, outside of that, I, I would just leave the series alone, because I think they sort of resonated enough with everybody. I think I could. I think I can leave it alone. You know, it's it is what it is. It's uh, I think it's good enough as it. Alrighty, well that wraps up every question that we got for this episode. I appreciate y'all tuning in and uh, dropping all the questions. Again, if you would like to have your questions featured in future episodes, keep an eye out 
for my uh, future posts uh, for each episode, I'll be announcing who's going to be in episode six, probably in the next week or so. Uh, Toonster, great to have you on here, man. It was good to hear some uh, some behind the scenes stuff from you. What uh, would you like me to link in terms of uh, social media for you? I can link your Game Jolt and your uh, I think you you have Twitter and and YouTube. Anything else you want linked? Um, yeah, I think outside of that, you could, you could follow me on, um, you could follow me on Game Jolt at Toonster Games 95. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Toonster Games. And, uh, and of course on YouTube, if you want to see more funny videos, go to at, I think at Toonster is my handle on there. Um, no, I had a great, I had a great time being on here. It's uh, really great. I'm glad to have finally been able to answer some questions from you know my audience, and you know it's great to be on here. I'm, I'm glad to have been able to speak with you because it's been uh, God knows how long since we've spoken together. So it's been a great thing, and I'm I'm glad to have had this opportunity. So thank you very much for having me on. Oh, no problem, man. It's great to have you on here. Uh, um, can't wait for people to listen. And uh, yeah, this is this be a great. This has been a great episode. And I will see you guys uh, in the next one. Yeah, go check out Toonster stuff. Link in the description. And uh, if you guys haven't seen the previous episodes of season four, uh, be sure to go and give those a listen. They are all great. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, check the link in the description again for all the Toonster stuff. Go check it out. And I may I may try the uh, six horrors games. We'll, we'll have to see. So I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening. Catch y'all later. Have a good afternoon, evening, or or morning, whatever time it is for y'all. Have a good night, everybody. See y'all later. Bye-bye.